Head over to miniaturemarket.com where there are thousands of board games at discounted prices like Caesar sees Rome in 20 minutes. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. You're about to see my Allegro one minute overview and final thoughts. This is designed to see if this game warrants more of your time. If it does, just keep watching because then you'll see my full intro overview and final thoughts. However, if you don't want to be spoiled anything and you want to skip right to the full review, use the time index below in YouTube. Caesar sees Roman 20 minutes is a two player game where one's Caesar, one's Pompeii. Over the game, you're gonna be trying to control different areas around Rome. And when controlling areas, you're gonna be placing your influence tokens, and the first one to place all of them wins immediately. Each turn, you'll have two tokens to choose from, and you'll be placing them on the corresponding spot, depending on the icon, and flipping it either way, giving you a certain amount of control in each of the adjacent regions. And it's sort of a game of chicken, because the last one to place, this kind is wild, will get the bonus token, which gives them different abilities. And these allow you to do all sorts of different things like adding extra tokens behind your shield or flipping opponents types of uh, you know tokens or putting even more of your influence tokens out. But you're also fighting over Rome, which has the most places to place, but you'll actually get to place two of your tokens as well. So you're trying to tactically look around the board and see where are areas that you're gonna win the total control to place these, and if you're adjacent to one of those, you get to place extra ones. There's also two mini expansions in there as well, and a solo mode. Caesar is a quick teach. It's even more streamlined than its predecessor, Blitzkrieg. You've got two choices but they spiral into great amount of depth. You're trying to split the value of control between different areas. Do I want more here or more there? It's a game of chicken where you don't want to put the second to last token because that last token in the area gets the bonus. Sometimes you're trying to get both the bonus in the area. Sometimes you're conceding just to get the bonus. Great decision space there. You're also trying to trigger adjacent bonuses and place more things down so you're working into it like this little flow of where you're going on the map. The mini expansions act, act you know, bring a lot more depth to the game, even though it's great as is. The randomized bonus token setup gives you unlimited replayability, but it's not a head turner. It's not that beautiful. It looks like a boring war game. I would have liked to have seen better, more intricate art on the board, but overall it's a great game and I got a saxophone serenade. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're trying to seize Rome in 20 minutes and one of us is gonna be Caesar, the other Pompeii. We're gonna be trying to seize Rome in 20 minutes. Let me show you how this works. I'll see you on the other side. In Caesar, seize Rome in 20 minutes. One player will be Caesar, one player will be Pompeii, and you both get these really nice bags that have your tokens in them. Now here is the board set up. It's a randomized setup with some bonus tokens, and one player sits here, one player sits here, and it's a race to be the first player to place all your influence tokens on the board. The first one to do that wins immediately. The game is very simple. From your bag, you're gonna randomly draw two tokens, put them behind your shield. Then on your turn, you're simply going to place one of these. Notice they have an, an icon on them. This is a dagger and this is a shield. So if I wanted to place here, it would have to be one that has a dagger on it. And when I do so, you see this line matches up with this line. This means I have four control in this area and two in this area. Or maybe I spun it like this. Or maybe instead of that area, I wanted to go to this one or any of the ones that have a shield on there. I would need to play one with a shield and this one's sort of even three and three. And so you're getting control. So to control this area, we see that there are three different spots that will see who controls it. So let's say the next player places this one here. So they now have five and this player has three. Now that's probably not the smartest thing in the world to do because this player is gonna be able to place the last one. And that's important because whoever places the last token, regardless of whoever wins, gets this bonus token. In this case, it's this player. They have four plus three, that's seven to five. This player would win. And because they were the last one to play this, they would take this token and activate it. I'll talk about those in just a minute, but they would take their token here and place it. Now remember, whoever runs out of these first wins the game. So it's a little bit of game of chicken because you don't necessarily want to be the player to place the second to last one there because you're opening up the possibility for them to take the bonus token. Now, sometimes you might end up actually being the one that lost this. Let's say this, this is four, this is five, but this player lost it. This player will get, the blue player will get this because they win this, they control it, but this player who played it last would get the bonus token. Well, why would that person lose it on purpose? Maybe this bonus token is gonna help them do something more strategic, plus maybe this area is more important to them, uh, so they want the five on this side. So let's talk about what these bonus tokens do. Now, this allows you to flip any opponent's marker. Let's say it looked like this. You could go, you know what, I'm going to flip it like this, and now this one's over there, the one that has not been you know, resolved yet. 
This one allows you to take another turn right after that one. This one allows you to draw an additional token from your bag, knowing that you'll always have three to choose from. Now, if you get this one, you place it here on your board. And in addition to placing the normal one, if you, you know, whoever won it, you get to place an additional one for every one of these you have. So you can build up an engine. If you have three of these, you're gonna place one plus three others. And it's a way to really quickly get rid of a lot of your tokens. Now, speaking of seizing Rome, this is the one that has the most one, two, three, four, six different things. But when you win it, not only do you get to put a token here, but you also get to put a second token there. And it always has this token in there as well, which helps you usually place more than one. Now, another thing is, let's say that it looked like this and we placed this, we took the bonus and we got to place this here because we control it uh, eight to five. If you control at least one other adjacent area, you get to place another one. So you're trying to sort of like work your way through things. Another thing is this one was a boat. There's some with boat shields on there, but some of them have this point token on there, the little leaves. That's wild. You could play that on anything and that gives you some flexibility as well. That's pretty much the base game. Whoever gets rid of all their tokens first wins. Now there are two mini expansions, Centurion and Poisons. There are three of these influence tokens. These are sort of like the bonus tokens, if you will. And there's three of these and three of these. You'd add them in, depending if you're playing on one or both, and then you randomly remove a certain amount of tokens so that it's a different uh, you know, amount in there each game, different distribution. This, instead of drawing from your bag at the end of your turn, you select one of your uh, you know, available Centurion tokens. And those are essentially three really powerful tokens that start outside of your shield that you get access to, one for each one of these that you get. And as you can see, this one has one of two different things on there. Three wilds, or seven zero on the sword. Now with poison, they would take one of the tokens in behind their shield and add it randomly, one of them randomly, back to their bag, meaning they'll have one less than normal as well. That's pretty much it. This is a very quick teach. Super easy to understand. It's even more streamlined than its predecessor, Blitzkrieg, which is also a Palomori two-player short game. Similar, you're drawing things from the bag, behind your shield. This is sort of like a sequel to that. It's even more streamlined and easier to teach than Blitzkrieg was. Uh, this, you have two choices. You've got two tokens. That's it, place one. Uh, but it spirals into great depth. Which one do you place? Which area do you place it in? Which orientation do you place it in? Do you waste your wild now? Do you want to set yourself up for, or possibly set the other player up to end it and give you the place, but they get the bonus token? Are you trying to go next to a place you already have control over so you can place an extra one? Are you trying to build up an engine of those tokens where you, every time you place one, you get to place an additional one? Tons of choices, tons of depth in such a streamlined, easy game. Uh, I love how the, you have this sort of split value control value. So you're trying to figure out, hmm, can I win a little bit just barely with this one and give me more on the other side? Figure out which side to put those on and where is just a, a fun little game. It is a game of chicken because you don't want to be the person to put the second to last token down because you're opening up the possibility for the other player to get the bonus token and sometimes win that as well. So like you're trying not to be the person to put the second to last. It's a fun little game of chicken. And that is just such a brilliant thing that the last player gets the token. So again, you don't want to be the one to play second to last because they can be the hammer, get the area and the bonus token. It's, or you can possibly make it so that someone's like, ah, I'll concede that, but I want the bonus. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant design. It's such an easy thing. I love it when I see things like this. Triggering those adjacent bonuses from control is awesome. It's like, oh, I, I, I control this and I control at least one next to it. I'm putting an additional one. Awesome. Little mini expansions. They don't add too much uh, you know, complexity, but they do add more replayability and more depth. I like that. I like that there's a randomized bonus token setup. So every game, you know, different things you're gonna be fighting over are gonna be different. On the negative side of things, it doesn't look great. The bags look awesome. The artwork on the bag's great. The quality of the components are fine. It's just, when you look at the board, I just wish, it's very functional and it works and it's clean. And I see that that's definitely what they were going for here. I would have liked to have seen it be a lot more beautiful, a lot more artsy while still being functional. It doesn't turn heads. People aren't gonna walk by and go, ooh, what are you playing? It looks like a boring war game. It really does, but it works and it's functional. So there's that, but I would have loved to have seen it be much more beautiful. So because of all this, it's a fantastic quick 20 minute two player game. And I love these styles of games. And this is a fantastic one. So it's staying in my gaming library. So let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic 
premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge for their latest Game Topper 3.5 Kickstarter campaign.